We were, we were talking about trans issues a moment ago, so I wanted to hold off because we have a story here, actually. This is a tweet from Colin Wright, good friend of the show, and it's actually just a repost of an Instagram post from a female amateur skateboarder. He says, female skateboarder Taylor Silverman is speaking out after placing second to a male competitor who identifies as a woman at the Red Bull Cornerstone contest. Uh Silverman and other female skateboarders were robbed of their achievements and prize money that was meant for women. In the post made on Instagram, Taylor Silverman said, my name is Taylor Silverman. I I am a female athlete. I've been skateboarding for 11 years and competing for several years. I have been in three different contests with trans women two of which I placed second, and the last contest series I did for Red Bull, I placed second. The trans competitor who won took $1,000 in the qualifiers, $3,000 in finals, and $1,000 in best trick. This totaled $5,000 of the prize money meant for female athletes. I took $1,000 in qualifiers and $1,750 for second place, so $2,750 in total. The girl who took third received $750. The girl who deserved $1,000 for best trick best trick took nothing along with whoever would have placed third. I deserved to place first, be acknowledged for my win and get paid. I reached out to Red Bull and was ignored. I am sick of being bullied into silence. In the next post, Taylor Silverman posted the email sent to Red Bull saying, hope all is well with you. I am reaching out in hopes of being directed to the right person to express my concerns about what occurred at the Red Bull Cornerstone contest with the transgender competitor in the women's division. Perhaps that is you. If not, Hopefully you can put me in contact with the correct person. A biological man with a clear advantage won the women's division, best trick, and also multiple qualifiers. This took away the opportunity that was meant for women to place and earn money. What happened was unfair, and at the time I was too uncomfortable to speak up. I understand that in today's society even some women think this is acceptable, but I believe in doing the right thing even if it's not the popular thing. I now realize it's really important for me to speak up, and I'd like to schedule a time to talk. So I have announced that uh, I got my math wrong, but uh, um, I have announced. I said, Tim Cass will gladly cover the difference and grant Taylor Silverman the $2,250 difference lost to placing behind a male athlete. We will also be willing to cover the total, total lost revenue for the female athletes who would have placed higher were it not for the male athlete. Now, she didn't lose $2,250. She lost $1,250 because she didn't win best trick. Someone else, I guess you said, would have. And so, the, so some people have asked me, they said... You know, Tim, you, you, you said that the uh, NCAA women, you know, it's, it's too bad for them or whatever. And I was like, no, 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 hold on. What I said was... You mean the swimming? The swimming. Uh, I said, they are not complaining about it. How can I speak up for them if they're not speaking out for themselves? Taylor Silverman spoke up for herself, said, I don't believe this is fair. And I believe that's, that's deserving of, of support. And also, totally biased. Mm-hmm. I've been skateboarding my whole life. Mm. I, I had worked with the uh, organization, briefly, mind you, that actually got equal pay for women at the X Games. We've talked about it quite a bit. When I saw this, knowing what I know from skateboarding for, what, what am I going on, 23 years, knowing about the physical elements, knowing about the physics, Taylor Silverman is absolutely correct. And let me, let me make this point before we get into the bigger picture. Some people have said, uh, in response to me, we had our good friend, the amazing atheist, said women should compete in the women's division. I responded to Colin Wright saying that men, males, have a higher center of gravity. What this means is that from a standing position, a man can ollie higher, a male can ollie higher than a female. Females carry their center of gravity lower, which is better for balance in a lot of ways, but means their, their ollie height, their jump height will be lower. There are very clear differences and advantages that males will have regardless of hormone replacement therapy. Skateboarding is not a muscle-based sport where it's like the stronger you are, the better you can be. There's, there's a, a gress, a, aggression, there's grit, like your willingness to take risks, and it's very much control. If you have a higher center of gravity, you're going to be able to clear higher obstacles. Women also have what's called a more pronounced Q angle. That's the quadricep angle, meaning because of the wide hips, the femur and the quadriceps come at a harsher angle than a male would, regardless of hormone replacement therapy. This means that biological females competing at any stage are going to be higher, uh, more prone to leg injuries, knee injuries, ankle injuries a clear advantage for male athletes, regardless of if they're transitioning or not. So this one to me, I think needs, you know, I'm, I'm biased, obviously, but also it's gone. The story has gone viral. Everybody's talking about it. Um, I think it's important to talk about, and I think it's important that people like Taylor Silverman are speaking out and saying, you know, I think this is not fair. Now the, the crazy element is her post on Instagram has something like, the last I checked, 11,000 comments. 
Yeah, it's huge. The anti-Semitism, because mm-hmm. uh, Taylor Silverman's Jewish. Right. Crazy, crazy. And she has a Star of David in her. In her right, bio. and these are these are the leftists who hate Israel, yes. mm-hmm. who believe in these weird conspiracy theories, like like the Farrakhan stuff, and are now going after her and attacking her for being Jewish, simply because she said. This is money that was meant for female athletes. Yeah, I mean, look, the left doesn't care about these things that they claim to when they talk about, like, racism, sexism, homophobia. In fact, despite their vitriol, they don't even really care about the transgender issue. They just try to use these labels to accuse anyone they think it would be useful to get out of the public discussion. Um, And when it comes to their attacks on other people, they're almost always willing to resort to these labels, but it's never talked about, right? So it's an instance of, and creating a rule surrounding certain language uh, about ethnicities like slurs and then saying we are only going to prosecute one group of people for doing this so people on the left can get away with it like crazy i think they mm-hmm. also wanted to figure out how to make sure that white men could be qualified as diversity hires mm-hmm. <laughs> I think stories like these are the biggest threat to so-called trans rights because at this point, when you get into the sports and physically comparing the two, it's unavoidable. So I know for a lot of people, they think live and let live. If somebody's above 18, let them go through the process. If they want to get these plastic surgeries to make them look like the opposite sex, fine. It's not hurting anybody. But then once you get down to something like a competition where the differences are obvious, we're going to be seeing more and more cases like this. Well, and Like Leah Thomas, for example. Well, women's women's rights one-offs. activists know about this. Mm-hmm. Women's rights rights activists can clearly see um, that showing the unfairness of men competing against women in women's sports could be the turning point needed. I want to give a shout out real quick to uh, to Taylor Silverman. You can follow her on Instagram Taylor May Silverman, and on and, and on Twitter, I believe uh, her Twitter is T M Silverman. But specifically because she posted on Instagram this: "Truth sounds like hate." to those who hate the truth. Many many people so, in her position didn't stand, like for the Leah Thomas, there was no right. woman who actually stood up. Only so the one who her. lost. Yeah, she after had, she, yeah. So she, so this, this is another interesting thing. Uh, Taylor spoke up, um, I believe it's been a few months since the event. Mm-hmm. And I actually talked to her, we're, we're, we're maybe working something out, uh, some kind of, we'll, you know, we'll do an interview or maybe. But um, it's been a few months actually since the contest and I looked at her record. She's somebody who actually won, actually got cash. She got second place. She, you know, she, she qualifies. She's winning. When it came to the NCAA swim meet, the only person who spoke up was the one who got bumped. Like an eighth place or whatever it was. It was yeah, it was like, yeah. what was it, 17th or something, 16th mm. place or something? By the way, yeah, I made a decision. It, and it wasn't even okay. her. It was actually her teammate who spoke up on her behalf. Oh, wow. I am going to start calling all of the people who want men dressed as women to compete in women's sports men's rights activists. Yes. They are men's if rights they, activists. You are, if you, you will say be, you that will be like adopting, a trans woman should be able to compete in women's sports, you are an MRA. And you will be adopting the language of radical feminists when you do it. And bravo, right, those bravo, 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 Seamus. Look, when women well, talk... Well, 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 I listen. 